little while ago, I posted um, the installation of an electronic control module, an ECM, um, in my boat. It was a separate unit on the side um, that went to the motor and uh, allowed me to control the speed infinitely. It occurred because I had a Minn Kota motor, a 50 um, pound thrust one, that I hooked up lithium, ran it uh, wide open for a little bit and it burnt out the speed coil. So it was either replace the speed coil, which would have been a little work and would uh, have been pretty expensive. It's down in the motor unit um, or uh, make an electronic control module um, to have infinitely variable speed in both forward and reverse. Um, I also have an older Newport Vessels 46 pound trolling motor that also has a burnt out speed coil. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, how many people burn their speed coils out that much? I do. And um, I decided that I would build the electronic um, control module um, into the head of the unit instead of having it separately. So you'd be able to switch it on and have a variable speed control on the top um, that you could use it without having this separate box on the side. Now, the previous one I built, it's in the back of the boat. I have a Pelican Bass Raider, it's wonderful. The control is here, right under my right hand. Um, and I have a steering mechanism too, so I don't even have to look at the motor behind me. Um, this one though, would be one that would probably go on the front of the boat. So you slide up front, the heads you know, could be reversed and you can um, drive and, and control uh, the speed just by, by uh, controlling the uh, knob on the head of the motor. It costs about $40 to do this because the electronic speed control module um, is 34 and there's a handful you know, of other parts. Um, and uh, this will be a kind of a quick video showing what I did. I hope the innards don't end up looking too much like spaghetti, but if you'd want to do this to a motor that you have, um, it, it's pretty neat and it's too bad they didn't come built in with this unit. Um, I don't think it would cost them any more than putting that, that switch in that goes five speed forwards and three speeds in reverse. So let's get started. There's a small clip and screw that hold the rotary switch in. The switch and the control handle can be lifted out as one unit. Four of the connections are held together with a very tiny screw and nut on the other side. Two of the connections that control other speeds that we won't be using just pull off. Okay, so all of these wires connected to the switch. And this is the one that goes directly to the motor, these two. Um, so these are the ones that would just be powering the motor down there. Um, this comes out normally from the battery. And this plugs into the um let me see here the head that has the lights on the top so i will be using that so hot ground this device right here is the hobby wing quick run 880 brushed electronic speed controller so it would be used with a brushed electric trolling motor 
Um, it'll handle 80 continuous amps, which is no problem even for a large motor, or a burst of 400 amps. So um, these seem to be used successfully uh, by people. So let's um, set this up. Now, here is the ESC, or the Electronic Speed Controller. Um, it does have a fan that goes with it, and I tried to find the model that came with the fan, but was unable to, so I have ordered a fan, and I will be mounting it to the top just to keep it a little bit cool. A lot of wires on here, and uh, for now, let's just talk about the ones we're going to need to program it. Now, this device uh, comes with preset settings that we need to look at or change a couple of them um, in order for it to work properly for our use. And in order to do that, you need a programming card. It's a little device that allows you to digitally change the settings on this speed controller. And the programming card comes with this cable, this three wire cable that plugs into the top of this. And when you plug it in, you want it on the right side with a white wire facing out. Don't worry about these other wires now. And if you lift these up, you will see another three pin connection that allows you to plug it in and the white wire should be facing in towards these red heat um, fins here. Now it comes with this little set of programming directions and they're one through 15, but we just need to change a couple of them and then look at a couple others. So um, once you get yours, you might be able to see it a little bit differently, but the first one is running mode. And you can have it so it just goes forward and brakes, forward, reverse, and brakes. So this third one that you can't see because I marked over it is just forward and reverse. So programming mode one, we will want option three. The gray area is what it is set to. Programming mode two, I'm going to bring it to your attention because setting one is for lithium batteries. And... Um, that is what I'm going to be leaving at because I have lithium batteries, which I think got me into this problem to begin with. The cutoff voltage, you can disable it, you can make it auto or auto medium, and we are going to leave that at three. Then moving right down here to option six, there's the max reverse force. And we have 25, 50, 75, and 100. It's set at 50, but we're going to move it to option 3, which is 75%. And then down here at option 11, neutral range. And this is the point when you turn the dial, where will it stop? And then if you keep turning it in that direction, will it start going in reverse? And it can be anywhere from level 4 through six and I am going to put mine um, initially at um, level four um, but I could move it up to five I could reprogram it later a lot of people seem to put it at four or five and I'm going to put it at level four so let's program this when you connect this programming card, which will only be using for programming this device, um, you want to make sure that the last thing you do after you connect all the wires is connect power. And I'm using a little lithium battery that I use for my um, fish finder because it's just easy to work with here and we don't need much. So I am going to hook it up and then I am going to turn the small on switch on and as we can see the first setting which was for the running mode is on two and we're going to want three here so the first setting we're going to want a value of three so 
we have item number here, a little button, a little button that says value, and I'm going to hit it once to get it to three. And you don't have to lock it in each time. You can do it at the end, but I'm going to do it. So it's locked in. Then I am going to move down item number to two and make sure that it's at one. And I have one because it's a lithium, of course, but you might want to change it if you don't have a lithium battery. Then I'm gonna move down to item three and three I want to leave at three. And if you remember, item three um, was the cutoff voltage and it was medium. So we're just gonna leave that one at three. Now I'm gonna move down to item six. And item six, I want at three. And if you remember, this was the maximum reserve force. Two is 50% but I want to bring it up to 75%. So I want to be able to go backwards at 75% of full speed if I want to. And then I will set that. And then item 11 has to do, if you remember where the uh, neutral range was. So we want to go down to item 11 and it's already set at four. Some people set it up at five, they may be right, but some people set it at four, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I figure that I sh since I really want more of a range going forward to high speed, I would like more of a turn of the dial in that area and less of a turn of a dial going in reverse, because reverse is something you don't use a ton of. So once you've done that, I'm gonna lock that all in and then turn the switch off. And this is now programmed. And of course, remove the hot wire. Now, I'm going to disconnect this programming cable and the programming card from this connection right here. But when I get my fan, it will plug into the same three pin connector to provide power for it. And when I flip the switch on, so when this is running, the fan will also run. When I connect it to the battery, we just get full speed. And I think I will mount the ECM right in here with actually a little hot glue. And wiring will be very, very easy. Um, these two blue wires will go, let's see, is that the negative side? Yep. We'll go to the negative pole. And these two yellow ones will be combined and go to the positive. And then this... Where's the oh, orange and black one right here? We'll go to the hot coming in from the battery, which is this and this right here. Because this is the one that goes out and plugs into the battery right here. And this will plug back up into the cap so we can get a battery reading, which I don't really need, but it's there, so we might as well use it. And the potentiometer, I will drill a hole through here and it'll be mounted someplace right up in here. And even though the controller here will not need to be turned anymore, it does mount right into a little slot. And when the cover goes on, it'll mount into this slot and hold it in. And there's another set of slots up here. So I'll be, still be able to push it in and extend it and use it to move the motor. Cool. And this is the wiring diagram that I will be referring to. Okay, after a wire cutting and crimping session, here's the um, ESC that's in the head of the motor. Looks like it's probably going to go back there. Um, 
the two blue wires, which are positive, were hooked together because the ESC can control two motors at a time. So without for we have two hot wires and two ground wires. But if you put them together, we get a lot more efficiency that way. So that is going to the hot wire that goes down the uh, shaft and into the motor. And then these two yellow ones um, also are connected together and they go down to the black wire, which goes down into the shaft, into the motor. And we have um, the black wire that's coming from the ESC. And this is the negative that goes to the battery. And here's the wire that goes to the battery. And we have the red wire from the ESC. And this goes to the red wire that goes also to the battery. Of course, the battery wire comes out the bottom of the motor, and here it is right there. Now, what I've got to do is <clears throat> um, I've got to connect the servo that has the knob to control the speed. I am waiting on a servo to arrive and um, some zero detent potentiometers so it's a better knob to turn that has a centering point in it. Um, you'll see it when I put it in. It's going to, it's going to take a couple days to be here. And um, <clears throat> then um, I also have a small switch here that I have replaced with um, a rocker switch on the other one I made. But with this one, um, I'm going to get some waterproof toggle switches. And uh, the switch will mount right here and the uh, zero detent uh, potentiometer will go right here so I'll have a speed control and an on off switch. Well I'm out here today uh, with the final touches. Um, I had to take it apart because when I put one of the screws in to put the motor head on I screwed through one of the wires so I had to take it off, strip it, solder it together um, and uh, you know put some uh, heat shrink tubing on it. Um, but that's all repaired. And um, now I have a 46 pound thrust motor with variable speed control, uh, courtesy of the um, electronic speed control module. Want to see it? Now I've left the handle on, but it is completely disconnected um, as far as using it for speed. So right now it pulls out, pushes in uh, to make it able to um, steer the boat. I replaced the battery with a little 12 volt power supply. Turn it on and the battery indicator on top of the motor goes. Here's the switch on the side. Here's the control knob. Let's flip the switch. And let's see, forward would be this way. And reverse would be this way. And the potentiometer with a little red line facing the front is the zero point. 